Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video, we are going to talk about creating a shadow catcher and then dialing in the shadow for your model in your shot in HitFilm. So this actually was born out of the forums. Someone asked me if I would do a quick tutorial on how to dial in the shadow catcher information in the in the in the the actual shadows for a model. We were actually showing off different camera tracking uh, things that are based out of the. Um, Foundry's new camera tracker. This is not a tutorial on how to track the footage, uh, but if you want, I'm happy to do a tutorial on that. So I'm just going to use a basic background picture instead. So I'm going to create a new composite shot. Click OK and just drag in this background picture. Uh, I do want to um, just make a little bit of an adjustment because I don't like how washed out this is. I want to up the contrast here a little bit, maybe dock down the brightness just slightly. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add in our model and everything. I'm going to start by creating a new camera. Uh, and then, you know, the camera itself is sitting at ground level, so I'm just going to raise that up a little bit, and you can see where the red line is and where the green line meets. Basically, that's where I'm going to... That's basically center of my of the universe, so about right there. And if you look at the perspective mode here, you can see that I have this camera and it's looking here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and bring in the model and drop it right there. And so now you can see that it is looking at that model. But here's the deal. If I look at the front of this, you'll see that the model is halfway through the ground so if i open up the world transform properties and just adjust the anchor point i'm just going to have that model sit right there on the ground itself i'm actually adjusting the anchor point so that if i decide i want to change the size of the model it will change relative to the ground so if i go back into my camera shot and i say well that's a pretty big looking model let me rotate it around hopefully big car maybe i'll go ahead and just you know, make it about like that size. Okay, so now I have, you know, my model basically in place here. Okay, let me go ahead and add a light. This light will basically act as our sunlight, and I'm just going to sort of place it over here, right? Okay, and I'm actually going to call that sun. And yeah, it looks pretty good. And so now the model is sitting on the ground. The sun is shining on it here, okay? Okay. Um, I'm not fond of the windows, so I'm just going to go into the models. Uh, actually, let me bring them up here. I have all the models here, and I'm just going to find the window plane that is uh, or the, the, the part of this model that's the window, and I'm just going to uh, scale it to zero so that the windows are gone. Yeah, it just makes it look a little better. Okay, so now let's add a new plane. This plane will be the shadow catcher. I'm going to make it three-dimensional, and I will rename it shadow catcher, and I will rotate it 90 degrees on its x-axis, and I will bring it down below the model. And so if I go ahead and up the size of it, the scale... Now, shadow catchers have to be white. So I could have made a white plane, or I can just do this and add the fill color effect, which will make it 100% white, okay? The second thing that you need to know about a shadow catcher is, is that the blend mode must be multiply. So you always want it to be multiply. So now you can see, though, that the sun is still affecting that plane. So the third thing that you need to know about a shadow catcher is under materials, you want to take a check off illumination. OK, so now the sun does not affect that plane at all, only the model itself. So now under the sun, if I open up and I turn on cast shadows and under the model, under the material properties of that, I tick on cast shadows. Now we have a shadow and it is being laid on that plane. And if I move the sun around, you can see how the shadow is being 
cast to it. So now I just basically want to place the sun exactly where it is, uh, where I think it is in the sky, and it's about there. I can go ahead and turn off the ground plane. And that's basically it. Now, now from here, all that matters is actually dialing in the actual sun itself, or the shadow, I mean, itself. And this is done in the light, under the light properties. Um, the first thing is the shadow opacity. You, how bright is it? How much is it shining? If it was more of a cloudy day, it would be much less. If it was, you know, very dark day, there you go. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. The other thing is the shadow diffusion, right? Right now, it's a pretty um, defined light. It was a very sunny day, so that's not unreasonable. But because it's on the grass, uh, you know, it's a little bit diffused, right, or blurry. So I'm just going to kick up the diffusion enough where I think it probably matches the other side. Okay, a couple of other things here that I would do. I certainly would add uh, a, a second light um, because there's obviously light bouncing off of the grass onto this side. I would probably call this bounce light. Uh, opening that up, I would pick up a little bit of the green off that grass, and then I would take this down. Uh, you know, just enough to kind of show that reflectiveness. Um, in the model itself, I probably would go ahead and, uh, you know, use the environmental layer so that it has a little bit of the, uh, you know, the reflection of uh, this, you know, part here and that sort of a thing. Uh, I would definitely put on a light wrap on the model because that will integrate it better into the scene. And again, I would source the background, and I probably would knock that down a little bit. Um, I might even consider uh, adjusting the sunlight's intensity, you know, so that I think it, it, it probably fits here into the scene a little bit better. Uh, you know, and I would just kind of tweak that until I really felt that that I had it. Uh, and pretty much, in a nutshell, that's it in terms of dialing in a shadow catcher to work with your model in your shot. Again, uh, if you're interested in doing a, a foundry tracker tutorial, I'd be happy to do that. Leave a comment below asking for that. Um, otherwise, if you have any other questions, uh, or you need anything else, comment in the section below. If you like this kind of a thing, definitely uh, think about subscribing to the channel, liking this video, and sharing it with your friends. And as always, thanks for watching.